There you go. It's hot. It's uh, mid-December. Top of South Island, New Zealand. And my daughter, Dayla, and me, are heading into... Hey, there's a mark. What? There's an animal, animal mark here. Just there, see? Well, look. There's been animals right down here. Look at that. It's deer. Happy days. We'll have a drink and carry on. Yeah. How you doing? Been better. Been better? Yeah. I've been worse too. There's been a pig up in here. All these plants have been harvested. And you can see right beside where Dana's sitting. It's made a nice beard. Loads and loads of it. So he's bought it all in there. He's got a wee roof above him. Got that tree. Just keep the dew off. A nice soft beard. You can sleep in it tonight. Yeah. Well, uh, Dale and I are going to hightail it out of here because the Department of Conservation are up here with a helicopter. And that helicopter is the reason we're not going all the way up there. It's going to Browning right now. Yeah, it's going to Browning and then it's going to the Hackett, but it's doing a big big loop around there and I'm gonna be on those what's well, gonna be on those tops. But it's not worth it for the chopper in the air. Hey. Carry on, hun. So we had to pull a pin on that hunt, uh, stayed in the hut last night and just wasn't worth it. I said to my daughter on the way home, I'm going to show you today how we can make a contiki raft and catch our own fish because it's blowing offshore right now at home, blowing southwest or southerly, sort of changing a bit. And with just a flax bush like this, a bit of that stuff and the wood that grows off it, we can make a raft, we can let it get blown out to sea and catch fish. You know what she said to me? She said, oh no dad, you, I'll, just, I'll just watch a YouTube clip, oh, I don't want to do it with you. And I thought, fuck me. <laughs> it's kind of a bit like with your kids, like they reckon you shouldn't teach your kids how to drive, you should get someone else to do it. You're kind of close with your kids in that way, where sometimes things can turn pear shaped. So anyway, this is the Contiki raft I've been using, and I've been getting us a feed of fish regularly. That's what it looks like, there's a sail in the front. Um, it's got a wee bit at the back. You see there for uh, putting the line and stuff on. I only put like five or six hooks on it. Uh, I've got a thousand metres of cat gut and a bit of backing line for my hooks. So it's kind of like a mixture between redneck technology and primitive technology. But it works. So since my daughter's not going to sit down with me, I am going to make a YouTube clip of how to do this. And uh, We'll put this one out tonight because you need it. You need a couple of days for the sail to dry before you really use it. So we'll make one now, but we'll take this one out later on tonight and see if we can catch a feed. But I'll show you how to make your own. It's easy and it's fun. Right, we'll kick into it. You're going to need some uh, some flax like this, and you're also going to need to find the wood that grows on it, like this wood here. And ideally, that bit there would be a bit too thin. You want to go thicker than that. You don't harvest the green stuff, you harvest the dead, dry stuff. So, um, there's a piece down there. This one here's dead. You bend it and it'll snap at the bottom. Like so, you just hear it snap there. Give it a twist. And pull it out. That's what we want. We want lots of wood like that. Just looking at this flax here, I found some wild plums. Happy days. Lunch. Oops. There's a whole different type of uh, varieties of flax bush you can use. This one here is a 
I don't know what the name of it is, someone can tell me please, but it's, it's really thick and it, it takes quite a long time to dry and it's not as strong when it does, it breaks very easy, but the actual wood that it's got is really fat, so that's a good one if you can get that too. I'm going to grab a couple more of those as well, because I need some fatter ones. Got this red flax over here, which is kind of interesting, makes a cool colour, but I'm going to be using this green flax here. It's a neat spot being under a flax bush. You can see why the mother pig in the wild will have a baby's here. Because what happens is the rain comes down and goes to the centre of the bush, but it doesn't go around here, it's still dry underneath. Anyway, the Māori in New Zealand have been using flax, or as they call it, harakiki, for years. They make all sorts of awesome stuff out of it. Kitties, little baskets and mats, endless amount of amazing things they use it for. But today we're using it for our sail and the mat that's going to be going on the, our Kentucky raft. Now when you're harvesting your flax, like everything, there's a right way and there's a wrong way to do it. So it's kind of like a fan, you can see here. And if you think of it as um, like, uh, this is the wee baby ones, the ones in the middle. There's the mum and the dad looking after the baby. You want to leave those ones alone and harvest what's on the outside. So you take your knife and cut this way, cutting down like that. That will ensure that when the rain hits that, it runs off and not into the flax bush. So there goes um, the babies there, and there goes mum and dad on the other side. So we can also take this one off this side here too. And it tidies the bush up. And we'll cut that one just to tidy it up as well. So you take this one too, down there. So you'll be left with something that looks like that with your bush, and you can come and harvest it again next year. It'll grow again. Right, let's crank into it. We're going to uh, get all our bits of wood first and make the base of our Kentucky raft. It's basically going to be rectangular. We're going to use the fatter bits in the middle, about a metre long or longer if you like. You can go bigger, wouldn't go any smaller. Now, regarding the laws of doing this, you want to have your name somewhere on the sail or on the mat with your phone number and details and uh, also you can't put more than 25 hooks on, it's basically like a set line. I only put like 5 or 6 because I only want to catch one fish, just enough for dinner. I like my fish fresh so I'll put it out regularly. So let's start cutting up some pieces and uh, tying them together and I'll show you how that works. So the first piece I've got there, fat at this end and a bit thinner at this end. This is going to be the front of my boat. There's the angle where it's sweeping up. So turn it over so you can see where the bit goes down. Where it goes down, where it's flat, take your knife and just shape it a little bit. Doesn't have to be much, just like that. So you've got an edge that's that way. And we're going to do that with each piece of wood that goes along. There's going to be another piece tied to that and tied to that and so on. So when you're taking your string off your flax, you notice there's a, a fatter side and a thinner side. You want to start on the fatter side. Just put your knife in like so. Run it down. Go so far, then you can pull it. Start on the fatter side just to ensure you get a good long length before it craps itself. Like that. See, it's still quite thick even at this end here. Right to the very end, it's still a good thickness. If I take the other side, the thinner side, it peters out. So we'll start again. There's the fat side there, there's the thin side. Do another one. Oops, no, I cut that with my knife and fucked it. That's why you pull it. I'll save that by just picking it up again and getting the rest of it. That's the reason you go like this. So you pull it, you can't cut it and ruin it. Do as I say, not as I do, otherwise you'll come unstuck. Take one of your strips, go to the thin end, fold it over like that. You're going to go like this. Give it a twist, so it's a figure eight. And poke it up through there. The old two getting stuck into the flax behind me. Beautiful. A nice wee loop. Don't pull it too hard, it'll break. This is the thing, it's not that strong. Like so, okay. Take two pieces you're going to start off with. They'll be your thickest pieces, preferably straight. You can, but it doesn't matter if they're not. Right. What we're going to do is we're going to put a loop through that like a lasso. We're going to go, turn that piece off, don't do that on there. It's going to go around here like that, start off with. Like that. Very, very straightforward. 
to take it down to about, oh, about there. Okay. Gonna go around there, and then we're gonna go like this, back underneath and between. But keep your thumb on that, keep the pressure on. You've got to keep it tight all the time. So it's gonna go underneath and like that. So it's nice and tight. Okay, same on the other end. Tie a loop through there, back in there. So it looks like that now. And back around. So it's bound two ways, around there and in the middle. That's our first two tied together. Now we're just going to let that sit like that and do the same thing on the other end with another piece of this. If you're worried about it coming undone, just tuck it under one more time, give it a tight pull. And what you can do is you can go to the end and you can tuck it into the actual wood itself, but don't pull too tight because you'll break it. It'll sit in there, but you can just tuck it in like so. So it'll just stay in there for now so it doesn't go loose. That'll take care of that. Right, now this stuff breaks really easy, so be aware of it. We'll repeat the same on this end here. Thin end, figure eight, loop, through there, make it into a lasso, like so. Back around here, on the back of it. And we're gonna go about all, I suppose about here. We're going to leave a bit of spare space at the end because later on we're going to trim some of these ones that are a bit, a bit sort of fucked up. Well, this one here is quite rotten at the end, so it feels like it's fallen to bits already. Doesn't matter. This is a uh, very biodegradable boat. If it gets lost at sea, no pollution, just goes back to nature. It's okay by me. What we don't want to do is we don't want to lose our line off it. So we always want to make sure that our line connected to the boat or from at least the boat to us has no weak spots in it so we can pull our line back in. If we lose our boat, not a biggie. Same thing again applies as we just did before. Around there a couple of times, make it nice and tight. That's looking bloody good. See that? There's our first two tied together with the bits of string left to carry on with the next piece. This time, I'm going to put a half hitch in there, which we didn't do before. Okay, I'm going to have that like so. And oh, she's. There it goes, but we're going to pop a half hitch in there like that. And repeat the same on the other end. So we go to this end here now. Here's that piece of string. Left over. Oh, she's looking a bit thin there, boy. There we go. We go over the top for this one, actually. The reason being is that it's pulling it in the right direction. Yeah, it's already starting to pull it in the right direction now. I want to give this a couple of turns on this because this is not very thick. It's still at the thin end of this bit of string. Flax, like that, and just stick it down here, underneath, and around here. It's going to make it nice and tight. One more. So we're going to carry on doing this for a while. Same process, we've got a whole base made up. Thank you. 
here's my platform, it's all loose. So what we're going to do is we're going to lash a piece across here and a piece across here. Right, here's the base of our Kentucky. She's not flash, but it'll work. It's pretty solid. Can get knocked around the sea a bit, and the good ones, and it won't fall to bits too soon. The one that I've previously made that I'm going to take out later on this evening, I've used it six times now, and it's just about due to be re-tightened up or replaced. That's taken me a good hour to do this and probably another five minutes to do each side so it's probably an hour and ten minutes of work there just to get that far next we're going to do mast rigging and then we're going to make the sail and also the mat that goes on the back you don't have to do that but i have it so i can put my fish on it when i'm carrying it out of the beach nice and clean and tidy but i'm going to take a break now and have a cup of tea and come back to that we'll see you soon so i've had my nice cup of tea and i'm back and i'm going to make my sail first before I make my rigging and my mast that way I can work out sizes in relation to that now when you cut your flax don't cut this end off keep it nice and long like that you want nice for the sails you want the widest bits you can and you want to split them right down the middle like so now the sail itself is going to be only five of these plaited those ways up and down and then we'll weave in amongst that you don't want to have a huge sail area that's real wide uh, it'll get your raft out faster if you do but you'll have more chance of the raft capsizing and getting a wind so um, better to just be patient have a smaller sail and get it out there and don't cut these ends off keep them intact so lay your five out in the ground and make sure that the biggest one the widest one is in the middle I'm guessing this one here, although well, much of a muchness, those two, maybe that one's a little bit wider. Yeah, we'll go there, we'll there in the middle. Here's our first weave there.
Okay, the way this is going to work is the sail goes on the front, lashes down there, there'll be a mast up here, and you've got two options with uh, this sort of contiki that I've discovered. One is that you can have it so your sail takes the line out to sea and then it releases and goes down and drops your line down. But that doesn't work where I live because there's rocks on the bottom and you get stuck. So I want to keep my sail up all the time and keep the, keep the line stretched from the shore to the Kontiki raft. So I'll be making a permanent sail that stays like that. The sail here, once it's dried out, it'll be sweet. It'll change shape a bit, it'll weave it bloody crooked, but it'll work. For our mast, we want it to be long and relatively straight. This end here gets quite strong. This is a bit bent, so I'm gonna whack it off in there. I want quite a tall mast because it's so light it doesn't affect the uh, balance of the boat being too tall. So there's our mast up, but to support it at the back here, I'm going to put a hole in here. This is what's going to have my support pole. It's going to be one on this end, put a hole in there. I'm also going to put one on the other end as well. It's just going to help the uh, pole stay in. Pushing it right through the wood there. Now for our poles, we're going to sharpen them. This is the thin end of the piece of wood. So I've sharpened mast flat like that, and that side can jam it in here between the two slats, like so. Face this back, so my two support stays go into the holes, there's one on there and one on the other side, into the holes that I've previously made. Next thing is tie these bits up. So there's the top, it's going to support the mask and lean into that. I've got a loop in there, I'm going to poke that through like a lasso. When my mast is up here, the wind's going to be blowing this way. Because you're going to be putting pressure on to lift these stays out. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a piece of string in this case a bit of flax, we're going to tie it from here back to these as well so there's some extra strength holding on and we'll put one in the middle too. Right, we've got stays running down each side and they're tied firmly to the supports. We've got one here that will take the strength of the wind blowing against the mast, pushing it that way, stopping it come out. That's just tucked down in between the two bits of wood down in here. All we do now is put our mat on the back for our fish, which I'm not going to do tonight because I'm running out of time and I want to go fishing with my other Kentucky raft, but I am going to put the sail on so we can see how that looks. So I've just tied my sail to the bottom at each end, one there and one there, like so. Now we're just going to fix it at the top and she's sorted. Right, that's my boat, done and dusted. There it goes. Check it out. Now, normally I'd make a wee mat at the back to put uh, my fish on. Basically, the same as I've made my sail, the same sort of plait, and I have that in there. But the wind has dropped a bit, still blowing a good 15 knots, but early on it's blowing its tits off offshore, and I want to go out now with my other Kentucky raft and see if we can catch some fish for dinner. A fish would be good. This is not ready to go because the sail is still green and it's heavy. It needs about, oh, really a good week, I suppose, to dry out properly. I put my last one out after two days of making it because I was so excited about getting the water, but a good week to ten days for that to dry out. There's a lot of weight and that moisture, and you don't want to be top heavy, it can blow over. But uh, that will be good to go. Yeah, about a week. So anyway, let's go to the beach, see if we catch some fish. It's a good offshore breeze.
I could actually eat this, but I won't. Two, here we go, mate. Have a seat. There he goes, he's off. Thank you. 
Just found this little fella, I'll draw it up. Seahorse. Frog dog batter. Have water. Hey folks, uh, good luck with your own building of a Kentucky raft you have a crack at it. And uh, as per usual, count the good. Be careful, see you later.